Hi guys. Today we are talking about our kitchen. Organizing our kitchen. And of course, just like any room, I believe we need to start with decluttering first. Now, what I've done in my kitchen is I did, and I wish I had done this many, 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 many years ago, but um, I decided to get rid of all but the amount of plates and bowls and cups that we can use in one day. If you have four family members, then you're only going to have four plates, four cups, four bowls, four drinking glasses. Now, this revolutionized our life when I started implementing it for the fact that now my husband and I, we reuse our dishes, you know, our, uh, we wash them daily, our cups, we rinse out and reuse throughout the day. But, um, my kids were hoarding dishes in their room on a daily basis. So I would get all the dishes washed and then I would come back to the kitchen and see 10 drinking glasses. That's when my children decided to go and get the dirty dishes out of their room and put in the sink. Now, ideally, you could go into their rooms before you start doing dishes and uh, collect the dirty dishes. But my solution was now we only have one per person. And if you don't get it into the sink to be washed, when I'm washing the dishes, then you're going to have to wash them to use them the next day. So someone has to clean the dishes before the next day. So one that keeps me on task, I clean my dishes daily. Two, it uh, kind of motivates the rest of the house to fall in line or they have to wash their own, which works either way. So I only have one plate, one bowl, one tea glass per family member. I did keep eight silverware in the drawer. Um, so if my family wants a clean dish, someone in the family has to wash dishes every day. Um, I did all, now, if you, I do have dishes in the garage, in a box, so that they stay clean and dust free in, when I have guests. So it's not like I threw them all out. I do have dishes, especially because I'm a, um, I'm a plate and coffee mug hoarder. I admit that that is a problem that I have. Yes, I believe in decluttering. Yes, I am an organizer and I have cut down um, but I do have coffee cups that I bring out every season. I do change my coffee cups every season and I do change my dishes out every season um, just because I enjoy it. So I'm not a minimalist. I just went minimalist in my kitchen because it keeps it clean and it motivates the rest of the family to keep it clean. That's, that's the key right there. Um, I only have the pots and pans and serving spoons. I only have what I need in the kitchen. Now, the way I try to figure out what I need, because sometimes that process you're like, well, I don't know what I need. I don't know what I use. I don't think about it. I put Everything except for what I absolutely knew positively I needed had to have in the kitchen. And I put all of the stuff that I wasn't sure of that was just taking up space. I put in a box and put in the 
um, garage. That way, as I needed the items, I would just go in and take out that item. Then when I stopped taking items out of the garage, I knew that those were rarely used items. Some I did, did get rid of and some were for entertaining guests, so those stayed in the garage. So only having four pots and just the serving utensils and cooking utensils that you need will help you keep things cleaner in the kitchen. You have less to clean. And the others, you know, you know, try my idea. Quarantine them in the garage. Um, now, for my food storage, I did throw out all of my, well, almost all of my um, storage, food storage containers. And I went and bought the glass ones with the clip down lids. And I did find that I needed, I bought one set. And then I did find that I needed a second set. And then from my old stuff that I had uh, thrown out, I did realize that I needed the larger rectangle ones. And that's another good reason to quarantine things in the garage until you figure it out. I was able to take out the larger rectangular ones for like soups and stuff like that. Now, I do um, like keeping the, um, oh, I lost my three train of thought. Oh, the bigger ones I use for soups and stews. That's why I found that I needed those and they didn't come the glass ones just didn't come big enough for the soups and stews. Um, now that there's only two of us and we're empty nesters, then, um, you know, those might work. I'm not sure even the largest ones in the glass set that I bought would work. But anyway, nevertheless, I did find out. I did keep some round Tupperware uh, ones that I've had for many, 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 many years. And you know what? Those are probably going to be the next ones to donate because I have found that I have not, I have not used those in the whole year that I, uh, I pared down or decluttered. Um, so I'm just thinking about that right now while I'm talking to you, even though I declutter there's always something else to declutter. You're, you, you probably, it's something that has to be done throughout the rest of your days. Um, it's the never ending. So, uh, and I switched to the glass ones because they can be used in the microwave to reheat. They can be used in the refrigerator and I think they can be used in the oven, of course, without the plastic lids. Now, I did buy a lightweight set exactly like, I mean, a plastic set exactly like the glass ones, but only for bringing my lunch because I found, uh, well, when I was working outside the home, I would bring my lunch and those glass ones were really heavy and I didn't want a heavy lunch box. So I did switch to those. But now that I, um, work for myself and I'm self-employed and I don't typically go out for lunch, those might, I might not need them anymore, but I do still uh, feel like one day I will be organizing inside people's homes and uh, I may still need those. But anyway, that's, that's why I went to the plastic ones just because they're a little bit lighter because I the reason I got rid of all my other uh, storage containers is I hated the, when you microwaved your food, you had the stains left inside of your storage container. So now the glass ones, they stay nice, clean. They're never stained. It just looks beautiful. And um, I just didn't need them. I found I didn't need them. And now that I'm an empty nester, I definitely don't need them. Um, 
uh, my daily appliances. I do keep my air fryer and my coffee pot out on my countertop. My uh, toaster is inside a cabinet and my crock pot is inside a cabinet. I have a bread maker that I only use once, maybe twice a year. So I do keep that in the garage. Uh, I usually use that around Christmas time. So that does stay in the garage. Um, so only keep what you use out on your countertop. Um, I also have my uh, cooking utensils. I have those out on the countertop, but mostly because I do not have drawer space. And the utensil drawer I do have is on the other side of the stove, and it has as much stuff in it as possible. And then my baking utensils are on the other side of the kitchen where I do the baking. I have a galley kitchen, and it doesn't have very many drawers, and it has no pantry. So I have to utilize the space as best as possible, even though I have a nice, it looks like I have a nice size kitchen. So, um, again, just keep what you, only what you use and sell and donate the rest. Now, I suggest when you're organizing your kitchen, you do it by stations. Um, anything that uses water would be near the sink, colanders, um, and your cleaning products. Those should be under the sink. Um, And again, that's an area that can really get out of hand. Um, you know, I would just keep, you know, your dish liquid, your all-purpose cleaner, and a bleach cleaner, your trash bags, and your uh, wash rags, um, towel, uh, dish towels, and sponges. Those would be the only things I would keep under the sink. Uh, oh, I also do keep a small little trash can because here is another thing that I did to keep my um, kitchen cleaner. Um, now, I didn't have a problem walking to the end of the kitchen to throw trash away, but apparently my other guests in my home <laughs> did. So uh, I put a little glass vase next to the coffee maker so that they could tr throw away their little packages for the Truvia and Splenda because that's what we use. At the micro at the uh, refrigerator, we use the water from the refrigerator to make our um, drinks um, propel where we put in our vitamin C and our Propel and some other sugar-free drink packets. We find that that's inexpensive, so we buy the little packets. Well, I have a pretty little container there to put those small packets in. And then I have the trash can under the sink because it's close to the coffee maker for coffee grounds. And then I have one in the middle of the kitchen when they use the paper towels to dry their hands. They will put their paper towel in the trash can. And that was the real, you know, those are the things that were driving me crazy. Leaving the little package, empty packages and paper towels on the countertops. So there you go. Now, occasionally they still <clears throat> don't fall in line, but at least now I have easy access to the trash cans as well. It helped me as well as it helped them, on, um, but... I was the only one walking to the end of the kitchen to throw away everything that needed to be thrown away. So those are some tips that might be helpful for you. And then in the cooking station, <clears throat> keep your pots and pans and cooking utensils closer to the stove as you can. Now, uh, I would suggest your, where your clean dishes are, that would be near your sink or near your dishwasher for easy put a, you know, so you can put them away in one hand motions because um, I don't use a dishwasher. Our hard water has ruined so many dishwashers 
and I just find it faster to wash the dishes by hand because me personally, I'm not motivated by the fact that you have to unload the dishwasher to load it. Now, if you have a dishwasher, it is easier. First thing in the morning, unload your dishwasher and then at night, it's already empty and ready for you to load. But um, that didn't work for me personally. So me, I'd rather, I have a dish pan next to my sink and I collect all the dirty dishes in that dish pan so that my sink stays clean and clear at all times. That way when I'm cooking and then, it, and it's different. I used to never fill up the sink with soapy water. I would just, um, you know, wash the dishes uh, just put soap on a rag and wash the dishes that way. But now that I have the dish pan to put my dirty dishes in, I, I fill up my sink with soapy water. I have the other one empty and I can just wash my dishes or if there's something um, with dried on food, it can soak while I'm cooking and it just for me, motivates me easier for the clean as you go. All my life, I have struggled with the clean as you go. I always made a big mess cooking, and then I would clean it all up at the end of the evening. Um, but now, I have all my dirty dishes in that dish pan, and now that I don't have that many dishes, it, you know, there's not many dishes in there but my sink will stay clean at all times until I fill it up with clean soapy water. And then some items may soak while I'm wash, while I'm cooking. And then as I'm cooking and waiting for it to cook, you know, I'm cleaning as I go. So that is what's worked for me. Um, now, I do have my spices. I have the larger spices that I bought at the grocery store, the taller ones. Now those, I have a piece of wood on the bottom there so I can make one step up for the, the larger spices. But for all the smaller spices and all the ones that will fit on the Lazy Susan, I do have a Lazy Susan for that. That's the only thing that I use a Lazy Susan for. Um, I put all those spices and I do, mm, excuse me, sorry. I do have them in alphabetical order just so that if I'm looking for a spice that I don't use very often and, um, I at least know the name of it, I can search for it in alphabetical order. I mean, it's not like I have a billion spices. I'm just saying there are some spices that I'm not as familiar with that I may have bought for a dish. And um, anyway, they're in alphabetical order just so you know how to find them. That's the way they are in the grocery store to make it easier to find. So that's how I keep that. Um, now, every kitchen organization project always depends on your kitchen. Um, like I said, mine doesn't have enough drawers. Mine doesn't have a pantry. Um, so mine, I feel it has all these cabinets, but they're not user friendly. Um, my kitchen to me is not user friendly. Um, and only one person can fit in it at a time because the refrigerator is placed in the center of the kitchen. And uh, it's like having a bowling alley and a refrigerator. And when you're cooking, you have to get into the refrigerator. So uh, no one likes to be in the kitchen <laughs> with me. And I don't particularly want too many people in the kitchen with me because you can't move. It's just, it is what it is. It's probably the only thing about my home that I really dislike other than the fact that it's an older home and always needs some updating tile, you know, all those decor things that need to be updated. But as far as my home itself, um, the kitchen is really the thing that I really detest the most and wish 
that I could, um, I wish I could have my friend Diva by Design come in and completely demolish my kitchen and rebuild it, but that's for another day. Um, now, what I do for my, um, you know, a lot of people have drawers to put their oven mitts and pot holders in. I don't, so I have two silicone uh, mitt, um, pot holders. One stays on my stove. I have a burner that constantly goes out and doesn't want to work. So I keep a pot holder there. That way I can use it as an extra counter spot space. And then I have one on my um, countertop. And then my oven mitts that my husband likes to use, they're the Pampered Chef ones and they go almost all the way up to your elbow. Those are the ones my husband likes. So those are in a bin in the cabinet with the pots and pans. Um, now you could put a little hook on your door, but mine are so, those Pampered Chef ones are so thick, they would keep the door from closing all the way. So I keep those in a bin in that cabinet, but I do hang um, some decorative ones off of my um, stove. And then I have some little mitts um, here on the podcast. You can't see me. I'm, I'm moving my hands like I have puppets on them, but um, the ones, these are silicone and they just fit over your thumb and fingertips, kind of like a puppet <laughs> when you, but um, I have those hanging on the side of my microwave and those are the ones I use the most to pull things in and out of the oven. My husband just likes to have his whole hand and arms covered, so he uses the big oven mitts, but that way, that's all I use. I don't need um, any other pot holders, um, so other than my decorative ones. But normally, if you have pot holders, you would just hang them on the inside door of your your cabinet that holds your pots and pans. And then because I have a galley kitchen, my baking area is across from the refrigerator. Um, that way, if I need butter or anything in the refrigerator, it's right there. I have all of that on the other side. Now, it is a little bit further from my oven than I would like, but I don't have any other place for it. Um, because I have the sink and let's see, I have colanders, the sink and cleaners. I have the, um, pots and pans, my oven. Then I have the storage containers and refrigerator. Now I do have another cabinet on the other side of my refrigerator, but that's where I keep the rarely used items like the crock pot and the toaster because they can just be put on the counter, used, and then put back. And then across there, um, I have all the baking stuff on the other side. Uh, it's just more convenient that way. Now, I do not use any cookbooks, and I do have some uh, heirloom family cookbooks and some that I use once a year. I do have them in a shelf right in my baking area. But these days you don't really need any cookbooks at all because you can look for everything on your phone. So technically all your heirloom um, book, uh, cookbooks could either be stored in the garage or they could be used as decorations on the tops of your cabinets. If you have space at the tops of your cabinets, you can use them up there as decorations. But um, these days we don't really need any cookbooks. All right, I'm just looking at my notes, make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, I am working on um, more in depth. All of my podcasts are just the basics. I am working on extreme details. 
of everything that I talk about on podcasts because I am creating a, a decluttering and organizing course. It will probably include meal planning, well, my meal plan um, and recipes. It will probably um, include how to declutter your entire home, how to organize your entire home, and, um, and the meal plan, and it will have videos included. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'm not sure how long that will take me to get all worked out, but then I will be selling that course for probably $195. And, um, it will be more detailed than the podcast, but I'm trying to help out as much as I can with the podcast and YouTube to, um, help you get started. So let me see if there's anything else I need to talk about. Now, another thing is when you're buying food storage containers or any organizing containers, I do like the rectangle and square containers the best because they utilize all the space. Round, um, round containers tend to cut off a lot of uh, surface area space. So uh, I just prefer, prefer, prefer that. All right. Now, um, with your, uh, oh, going back to the food storage, you know, some people believe in stacking them with the lids and then the cabinet space, once you fill that cabinet space with those uh, containers with their lids on it, you don't need any more. But every family is different. You have so many different sizes of families. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many containers you, you need. But for my family of four, I only needed two sets of the glass um, storage containers. And I chose to stack them inside each other by size, um, small and medium square, small and medium rectangles. They were all stacked. And then I used a bin to hold all the rectangle lids and a bin to hold all the square lids. Now I could hold them all in the same, but that's just how I chose to do it. It just depends on how detailed you need your organizing system to be. I have found that if I organize something and it's a mess the next year, then it needs a new system. This system isn't working. If I have a system and it stays organized all year long, then I know that that system is working for us. Uh, our bath, our uh, master bath, that system seems to work perfectly for us because it always stays tidy at all times, other than uh, me having to clean the toilets and the bathtub and the actual cleaning itself, the bathroom stays tidy. Uh, the living room pretty much stays tidy. Um, the kitchen now pretty much stays tidy. I'm, I'm constantly working on the systems in my home. And the thing is the systems aren't, well, this is the system and everybody should be able to use the system. You, these organizational systems, the reason that the main thing I do when I go in to organize is I try to organize according to what is one hand motion. That's one. Two, I try to organize according to your personality. Um, not everyone, not every system is going to work for every person. Um, so, so the system has to constantly be reworked until it works. When it works, it works. Um, I... I like using the phrase that the uh, professional organizer on YouTube, Clutterbug, uses. 
Um, it has to be just as easy to put away as it is to leave it out. And so that is what I try to, um, to work towards. All right, guys, I hope that this helps you with your kitchen organizing process. I tell you, declutter, because if you declutter the stuff that you don't use and you only keep what you use on a daily basis in your kitchen and you put less used items somewhere else, it will revolutionize your life. You will be able to keep your kitchen cleaner. I will take uh, start talking about freezer organization and refrigerator organization and pantry organization, which is different parts of the kitchen organizing that we can will tackle in a, in a later podcast. But I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you. I hope these are helpful to you. I know they are helpful to you. Let me rephrase that. I am here to help you, and uh, I will see you on the next podcast.